in a series called Beatitudes. And I'm speaking today from the fourth Beatitude, coming out of Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 1 to 6. And it says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Bless all the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The message Bible says it like this. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. The English Standard Version says it like this. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And I want to talk to people who are not satisfied. You've tried everything on your own and still you're not satisfied. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 4 that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. I love the Beatitudes because the Beatitudes are not just another set of rules for us to check off our box. The Beatitudes are qualities that we possess as believers. Like this is who I am as a born again believer. And I love how he says, blessed are they. Meaning this blessedness can be upon anybody. It's not just for a certain type of people, a certain class of people, a certain race of people. This blessedness that God is talking about is for anybody. Just like salvation is for anybody. For he said, for whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. We serve a God that loves the world, and his blessedness is to us all. The word blessed, Pastor Jordan talked about it. It's not a, a, a blessed a happiness as, as we think of happiness as if because of my circumstances are going well, I'm happy. Because I have a nice house, I'm happy because I have a car with gas in it. I'm happy <laughs> because I have food and clothes. I'm happy because everything is going good. I'm happy. This is not what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about an internal joy that in spite of my circumstances, in spite of my situation, I can have the true peace and joy of the Lord. And I'm here to tell you as a, as, a, as a witness today that you can have true peace and joy from the Lord in spite of whatever you may be going through. No matter how hard your, your life may seem right now, you can have the peace and joy of the Lord. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed is a Greek word called Oh, I'm going deep now, y'all. Oh, well, I, told, I told you, I don't know what may happen today. It's a word that called makarios, and what it means is you are blessed when God extends his benefits, meaning that you can't work for this. The blessedness that God gives you comes strictly from God alone. Oh, glory to God. I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want something that I can't work for. God, if you're going to bless me, I don't want to work for it. <laughs> Amen. I, I want a house I can't work for. I, I want a car I can't work for. I got a wife that I didn't work for. <laughs> I got a wife that when I see her, I say, glory be to God. <laughs> glory. The blessedness that God extends. 
For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works. Least any man should boast, God gave it to you. Come on, somebody. I want God's blessing in my life. Amen. Psalms 103 says it like this. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. See, God has benefits. I don't know about you, but when I look for a job, I look for a benefit package. <laughs> I'm telling you, because I don't want to pay for health care, and I don't want to pay for my dental care. Hey, man, I want it free. <laughs> I, I want something I, can't, I don't have to pay for. And here, Jesus said, I have a benefit package. I forgive your sins, and I can bring healing in your life. This is my benefit package for you. Come on. He said, and I can also redeem you. I bring redemption in your life, meaning I can bring you back. I can buy you back. I crown you with love and compassion, and I satisfy your desires. The thing you've been craving about, the hunger in your soul, I Jesus can satisfy hunger. I was cool with all the blessing until Jesus started talking about being hungry. I don't like to be hungry. But he said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Those who have a feeling of weakness and discomfort in their lives. If you will seek after God, he said, I will fulfill it. I love this passage in Mark chapter 5. And here's a woman that was in need. And it says, in a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and has suffered many things of many physicians, and has spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Sounded like Jesus was putting down. Like, he didn't want to be bothered. Like, who touched me? <laughs> and his disciples said it to him, well, they had an attitude. It must have been hot out there. Because they had an attitude, too, it seemed. Like, they said, well, Lord, you see everybody touching you. <laughs> you talking about who touching me, all these people out here? You see the multitude thronging me. And you're talking about who touched me. <laughs> and, he, and Jesus looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, she came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. I want to talk to you real quick about a about a couple of things I see in here, four things real quick. The first one is hunger is a sign of need. Hunger says, I need something. There's something missing in my life. There's an, there's an emptiness that needs to be filled. And there are a lot of people who are walking around Hungry. And when I say hungry, I mean a lack of a relationship with God. And people are in need of that relationship with God. This woman had a need. And the Bible said that she tried everything to fix the need in her life. She went to doctors. And only got worse. She spent all her money and only got worse. Because she was trying to fix the problem that only Jesus 
could fix. And a lot of us today, we're trying to fix a problem in our lives, situations in our lives, issues in our lives that only Jesus Christ can fix. The need of identity and the need of acceptance, the the need of, of being valued or being loved or purpose, all of these needs we desire And we try to seek them from elsewhere. Because I've dealt with rejection all of my life. And I need, I have a need of acceptance in my life. And now, because I'm trying to fix it, I'm connecting with everybody who I know I shouldn't be dealing with. I'm, 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 I'm hanging out with people just so they can accept me. Our identity. I need somebody to tell me who I am. Because my mama said I would never be nothing. They said I would be like my daddy, who was an alcoholic or a drug addict. I just need somebody to tell me who I am. And we try to feel this need through things in the world. Solomon, the richest man, the wisest man in the Bible. It says that Solomon, he had everything, but he just couldn't feel the void in his life. He say, well, I'm already wise. God gave me wisdom above everybody. Maybe if I just get a little more wisdom. And a lot of us feel like maybe if I I get an education and maybe if I I, I get an associate's and a bachelor or my doctorate, maybe if I continue to grow in my education, which that is good, get your education. But your education cannot be the thing that satisfies the soul. Solomon said, maybe pleasure. Maybe I need to just get more pleasure. He, he, he had a thousand wives, 700 wives, 300 concubines. Concubine. Maybe if I just have pleasures. Like there was nothing that he couldn't do. If he wanted it, he had it. If he wanted to drink, he drank. If he wanted to do other things, he did it. Pleasure. But it didn't satisfy Maybe if I get money, maybe if I get more money and and get thousands of dollars in my bank account, maybe then I will be satisfied. Maybe if I get my own business or if I become the CEO of the company, if I get all of this worldly status, I will be satisfied. At the end of his life, Solomon said, vanity of vanity was all useless. It it didn't satisfy. He said, fear God and keep his commandments. Because God in a relationship with Jesus Christ is the only thing that will satisfy your soul. What type of attitude, at what type of uh, 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 desire do you have and, and what is your appetite for it? What are you hungry for? What is the thing that you crave for the most and does it satisfy? Hunger is a sign of a need, but hunger is also, hunger causes pain. Have you ever heard of hunger pains? P-A-N-G-S? But I call it hunger pain. Because it hurts when I'm hungry. And a lot of us are walking around with hunger pains in our lives. Past hurt that we have been carrying for years. Rather, it's molestation that I had to deal with or abuse that I had to deal with. Broken relationships in my life. People abandoning me. Whatever the pain is in your life, Jesus said, if you just hunger and thirst after me, 
you shall be filled. I can heal the pain in your life. The lady had an issue for 12 long years. And she tried to fix it on her own, and she just kept getting worse. Is that you today? How long have you been dealing with the issue in your life? The issue that's been causing pain in your life. How long will you continue to try to do it yourself and fix it yourself? Because the more you try to do it yourself, the more the pain is going to show up in your life. Jesus says it like this. Come in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He says, come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. He said, just come. Come with all your pain, all your hurt, all your baggage, all your sins. Just come, and I will give you rest. I'll give you peace. I'll give you a break. I'll give you an intermission in your life from the pain and burdens that you've been carrying for so long. That's why it's so important for us to tell people about Jesus. Because somebody in your circle is hurting and carrying pains and burdens that only Jesus can, can heal. The, the Bible said the woman heard about Jesus. Somebody need to hear. Somebody on your job, they need to hear. Somebody at your school, they need to hear. Somebody in your home need to hear that Jesus can heal. Come on, somebody. Not only does hunger cause us pain, but hunger also changes your attitude. I don't know about y'all, but I, I kind of, I get mad when I'm hungry. I just get angry. I don't know why. I like, I'm, I don't want to be bothered. I need food. You know, my, my wife and I, we was at a restaurant, and they was taking forever to bring the food out. And I, my whole attitude changed. We was celebrating. And, and I was telling her because she was able to sit and see the kitchen, so she saw every time they brought a plate out, and every time they was coming out, she kept saying, this is yours. <laughs> and they were like, shoo, that, that's a neck. Uh, I'm like, come on. Like, I mean, I'm complaining, I'm grumbling, and, and, she, and she's like, yo, yo, your attitude is bad. <laughs> so true, it was true. So, you know, hunger, it, it changes your attitude. But what, what I mean by that is a lack of relationship with Jesus causes our attitudes to shift. Like our attitude changes. Like we get mad. We start, have you ever just woke up and, and didn't read your Bible or didn't pray and you went to work and, and you was rushing and all of a sudden you just going off on everybody because you didn't have that fellowship with Jesus. So you revert back to your flesh, the old self. Your attitude need to change. Come on, some of us, you know, we're in relationships and sometimes it just be a bad day and you just be, you know, going off on your spouse. Or you just have a bad attitude. Come on, I know you can't say nothing, just keep looking at me. <laughs> don't, don't, amen, amen. But the next time, next time they got a bad attitude, just ask them, are you hungry? <laughs> you, you, you okay? You need to eat? It changes your attitude. John, John 15 tells us that we need to abide in him as he abide in us. And if we do that, he said, you will bring forth fruit in your life. If you abide in me, if you remain in me, and sometimes we got to disconnect from the world and reconnect to God so that we can have the fruits of the Spirit in our lives, which are love and joy and peace and kindness and meekness and long-suffering. These show up in my life when I'm connected to Jesus, and I'm connected to the vine. Apart from that, we can do nothing. 
Amen? Hunger changes your attitude. But hunger also causes a relentless pursuit. Like when I'm hungry, I, I, I need food. Like nobody better stay out my way because I need to go eat. Have you ever been hungry and you just go and stand at the refrigerator and you open the refrigerator and you just, <laughs> and you're ready to eat it and you say, a cucumber, <laughs> a jar of may- a mayo, <laughs> mayonnaise in there, you know, like, okay, um, see what I can fix up in here. Um, a half a pepper <laughs> in a Ziploc bag. Come on, somebody. I, I, I can't eat this. There's nothing in here for me to fix up. And I, I got cheese, no meat. Peanut butter, no jelly. <laughs> Come on. I, let me. I, so you find yourself getting in your car. And you, you're driving down about 15 minutes before Chick-fil-A closed. <laughs> and you're running everybody off the road. Get out of my way. Bob. <laughs> Blowing that experienced church members. Like, get out of the way. See you Sunday. <laughs> I need to get some food. I got a relentless pursuit. But this woman had a relentless pursuit. She said, I've heard about this man, Jesus, that's able to heal the sick. And he's able to cause the blind to see and the deaf to hear. And he even raised the dead like I I, got to get to this man, Jesus, because if he can do it for them, he can do it for me. And the woman said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, the hem of his garment was the lower part of his garment. She said, if I can just touch that part, I shall be made whole. She said, I got to get to Jesus, and I'm not allowing anything to stop me now. Because I can't keep living like this. It's been 12 long years, and I'm in a desperate state right now. I need to get healed of this plague, of this disease in my life. And I'm telling you today, don't allow another day to pass without being healed and getting a touch from Jesus. Strip aside everything, all the pride in your life. Be meek today and say, I got to get him. I got to touch Jesus because I need this healing in my life. I need him to extend his benefits in my life. Heal me, Jesus. Deliver me, Jesus. Set me free, Jesus. Whatever it takes, I got to have it today. I need my joy today, Lord. I need peace today. I can't keep living like this because I cannot be the husband I need to be like this. Can't be the wife I need to be like this. Can't be the Christian I need to be like this. Can't be the classmate, the roommate that I need to be like this. I need healing in my life today. I got to get free today. And Jesus said, if you will hunger and thirst after righteousness, which is a relationship with Jesus Christ, you shall be filled. You'll have it today. You'll be satisfied today. Today is today. As I get ready to close, I told you, I don't know what may happen today. I don't know. I mean, I just feel good. But today is the day of salvation. He said, if you hunger and you thirst after righteousness, righteousness is a right relationship with God. It's not something you have to work for. It's something that God gives by extending his benefits. The righteousness of Jesus Christ by faith in him. For the Bible says, for all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. You've been working, trying to do it yourself, but it's not good enough. Only the righteousness of Jesus Christ in the relationship with him, we're satisfied. And when you receive that righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus, then you begin to have a right lifestyle, living right, because the righteousness of Jesus that's on the inside is now manifesting on the outside. 
I began to live right for him now. I become his workmanship unto good works. As I close, the woman said, the Bible says she touched him, and then she began to confess to him everything. Lord, I touch you. I was hurting and I was broken and, Lord, I was bleeding for 12 years and, Lord, I, I'm the one that touched you because I needed healing in my life. I, I needed peace in my life. I needed joy in my life. I needed purpose in my life. I needed freedom in my life. I touched you, Lord. Come on, I'm the one that touched you. And I love what Jesus said. He simply said, Daughter, daughter, even with your brokenness, even with your issues, even with your sin, the Bible said, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Come on. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we may become the righteousness of God. Through Christ Jesus. Come on, these are the benefits that God extends, and they're free today. They're free today. For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons and daughters of God. It's yours today. You can be filled today. Jesus told the woman, Go in peace and be healed of your plague. You can have the peace of God today. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's yours today. You can be whole today. Let us bow our heads.